Hey guys, stick around to the very end. I'll actually go over all the numbers of what we, what they're praised for, what I bought it for and what it rented for and uh, how much cash I have out of pocket and how much I'm making on this. 21 Pine, I've got some settlement right here. Okay. The windows are nice. Oh, it's pretty dumb. Siding's good. Flooring needs to be replaced. Let me see if we can get that chimney open. The rest of the windows over here are good. These windows are good as well. Look at some of the original glass. They're st still operational. Flooring in here is good. The carpet needs to go. There's a lot of humidity everywhere in the house. And there's the kitchen. We've got some newer like Home Depot countertop, uh, cabinets and countertops. we got some of the old original cabinets here. Back door. we got an old HVAC system. Uh, water heater is kind of falling through the floor there. It's a replacement, it's a newer electric unit. There's a washer and dryer connections. So there's a chimney here. So it used to be a gas one. They put an electric one in here, but they didn't fix the flooring. So it's kind of falling down. There's some PEX piping here. So some of that's been replaced, which is good. Again, just poor, poor maintenance on the HVAC unit. And you can see that here with just the humidity in all these. It probably wasn't getting enough airflow to get the humidity out of the house. You can tell by the smell of the carpets as well. It smells like pets and humidity, mildew. Yeah. And still some of the, the fabric covering there. The phone charger spot is <laughs> a metal bedroom. So it's a back bedroom, middle bedroom, closet in here with attic access. So we looked in there. That's a good tongue and groove, has some replacements, sheathing on there. The roofing is old, but it doesn't look like it's leaking. Um, here's the bathroom. There's a soft spot right here, which looks like it's a little bit rotted, but I don't see any termites or anything, any active infestation. It might just be maybe a rodent, maybe a little bit of moisture again. Lots of moisture in this house. The shower and tub and all that's actually not bad. Toilet's good. And that the vanity is good too, just needs to be cleaned up. The flooring is good as well. So we could save some money on not redoing all these flooring, just replacing all the carpet. This room probably smells the worst. This is the front room. I have access to the shower there, closet, ceiling fan. Let's take a look at the back right quick. There is a little bit of a slope when you look at this room. A little bit of a slope in the foundation. Uh, there needs to be some drywall repair here. There's a little bit of a sag. Got a couple new windows in the back. Looks like they replaced part of the section. So looks like they replaced part of this where there were some bigger windows. They did a just cheap, quick spray job. All that paint. We need to power wash it, repaint it. All the roofing is old needs to be replaced. There are some warp spots up here where some of the decking probably needs to be replaced. So I've got the old chimney. I'd like to get, really like to get the fireplace working. I think that would really do a lot to make this house more desirable. Uh, let's get the old R22 compressor over here. Don't know if this works or not. Uh, looks like there is some roof damage up there. Decent sized backyard with alleyway, corner lot. Uh, yeah. So I like this one. Let's do a final walkthrough of the Pine Street house. So we repainted the outside. Kept the same roof on there. Uh, Cody jacked up the side of the porch, leveled that out, put a little bit of concrete there. Did a little, patch the roof a little bit, fix the fence a bit. Uh, let's go inside, let's check it out. These are still the original wood windows in great shape. All right, so we uncovered the fireplace and kept the original brick. Check this out. Look at this. This is Acme brick, 1924. Isn't that awesome? That's so cool. All right, so remember this is that ugly carpet. Cody's able to find some flooring that matched with the flooring that's already here. So we kept that. I kept this good fan that's already here, replaced some of the vents. Painted all the shelving, painted the walls, cleaned up any cracks. So 
the living room. I'm going to go into the dining room. Again, have those awesome original windows. You can actually see kind of a little wave in the glass of how they used to make that glass back then. Kitchen didn't do a whole lot here. The cabinets and all that were really good. Put in some new appliances, get a fridge. And we got a stove. We fixed the flooring in here. Remember the floor was all messed up in here. Replace that flooring and put everything back together. It's a three ton AC system. It's working good, keeping this thing cool. I put on a new filter grill here. Got the hallway all painted. I patched up the ceiling in here, got that textured. Put in some smoke alarms as well. Put in new ceiling fans in all these rooms, replace some broken windows. bathroom just not a whole lot cleaned it up patch the drywall that was busted up there looks like we got one little patch we need to do and again this room smelled pretty bad because the old carpet we actually kept this fan just cleaned it up a bit and that's it that's the Pine Street house. This is a pretty quick and easy one. We bought this one in February, I think it is. I think I bought it. And it's June and we're all done. And we're ready to put this one on the market and see what it rents for. I'm thinking probably around $1,500 just because it's got these cool, tall ceilings. Central heat, you know, it's got some style characteristics as well. It's in a nice, safe neighborhood. You got a decent backyard. Um, Tell me what you think about this house. Would you have done some things differently? Let me know. Talk to you guys next time. Hey guys, let's take a minute. Let's look at Pine Street Waco House by the numbers. I can type. Okay. Uh, so this one was from a wholesaler. Uh, there's nothing wrong with wholesalers. You have to make sure you get your pricing right. Uh, the purchase price on this one was $127,000. Uh, the rehab was $26,000. The holding costs, um, so this is for like interest payments, electricity, gas, that type of thing, $6,000. Once we're all done, uh, the appraised value came in at one hundred eighty k. Oops, let's spell this. Um, so we expect we can get a loan amount of about 75% So what that appraised value is. Uh, let's see, to refinance it, the closing costs were 6 k uh, The tax escrow we had to put down with the lender was 5 k So I'm giving you guys everything I put out of pocket so you get an idea. Uh, the new loan amount, so 75% of $180,000 is $135K. Uh, the terms in this loan was a 30-year fixed at 7%. As you guys know, rates are going up. Um, they continue to go up. Uh, out of pocket. So out of pocket, let's see, we did about $170,000 in costs up here. And the loan amount of 135, so that's 35k out of pocket. Um, I expected this one to rent for about $1,500. Uh, we actually rented this one for $1,695 a month, which is amazing. The principal and interest on this was $898, and the tax and insurance a month is $287. That breaks down the $210 a month for taxes, property taxes at Waco, and $77 a month for uh, insurance. So that makes my PITI payment $1185. Um, I do pay a management company, and I pay them 8%. Since I have several properties, I get a lower percentage rate for the management. And with having as many properties as I do, that's not something I want to do. I don't want to self-manage. Uh, I could make a little bit more money, I guess, if I self-manage, but um, 
it just that's not something I want to do. Uh, so it comes out to my total expense of thirteen twenty a month. Uh, the sixteen, if we take that from the sixteen ninety five in rent, that comes to three seventy five profit per month. Um, this equates to about forty five hundred dollars per year in profit. Now, if I did self manage, this would be about sixty one twenty per year uh, self managed. Um, let's see. So, what I want to see here is I want to see at the end of the day what's my cash on cash return. Uh, is, is this even worth it? Should I just take this money and just put it in the stock market? I know right now you're going to say, no, 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 don't do that. But uh, maybe long term, it might be better in a different investment. So, 35K out of pocket, uh, this equates to about a 13% return cash on cash on my money. Um, what I, I'd like to see a little bit better. I like somewhere between the range of 10 to 20 percent, 15 percent being pretty good, 20 being great. Um, there were a couple of things on this, like uh, when I bought the property, interest rates were 5 percent uh, when I bought it. Uh, they went up two percentage points, so that's a big kick in the butt, two percentage points. But also, too, on the other side, I expected uh, $1,500 in rent, and that went, went up to $1,695 in rent. Um, so what what can I learn from this? Uh, so I like to do these calculations and sit back once I'm done with a property and see what have I done right, what have I done wrong. Um, purchase price could have been lower. Uh, that's a big thing. So you, you'd always renegotiate the purchase price. If I got that a lower amount, it would have been less out of pocket. Um, lower interest rate would be great. Um, it's kind of stuck with where I am at the market right now, where the market is right now. There's not a whole lot I can do that. Um, for um, maybe if I could have got a lower rehab amount, that would have been better. But again, I wanted to get the higher rental amount to make sure the property is, is done right. I'm not so much worried about this because I'll hold this for five or ten years. And the good thing is that this $16.95 amount that I'm getting in rent Five years from now, that might be eighteen ninety-five. So it might be an extra two hundred dollars a month. Now, as long as I keep this thirty-year fixed, and I, this is the key, is I don't like doing arms. I don't like doing adjustable rate mortgages. I know for the next thirty years, my principal and interest will be eight ninety-five. Yeah, my taxes and insurance will go up, and I expect that they will go up over the next five or ten years. But I also expect that my rental amount will go up at a higher amount than my tax and my insurance. So. You know, if I had $200 extra per month, $2,400 extra per year, um, that would be pretty good. And also, keep in mind, I'm paying down that principal. I'm also getting tax advantages from this, too. I can deduct the interest. I can also depreciate the house as well. So I'm getting, some, I'm getting multiple advantages there. So in five or ten years, I might be able to sell it. Uh, the appraised value, instead of being 180 it might be 220 or 240 uh, de depending on the market. But as long as I'm cash flowing this property, I'm not so concerned about where the appraised value is in the future. I'd like for it to be higher. Um, if it gets really high, I could sell it or I could refinance it into buying another property. I don't like that I have $35,000 out of pocket in this property. And the reason I don't like that is because uh, I can't do as many properties if I'm having to outlay so much cash per property. I'd rather have this closer to say ten or fifteen thousand dollars out of pocket. If this would have appraised a little bit higher, I would have had less in the property, or maybe if I purchased it a lower amount, I have less in the property. Because I'd like to do more of these. I'd like to do ten of these. But if I did ten of these, that's you know, it's you know three hundred fifty thousand dollars I have to be out of pocket. Well, I don't have that much money. I'm sure you don't either, or most people don't. So I'm limited until I can recoup that out of pocket. Um, so that slows me down a little bit. That's why I want to keep that out of pocket number as slim as I can with this Burr strategy. You remember Burr buy, re uh, remodel, refinance, and rent and repeat. Um, so. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on this. I still like this because I'm still generating a profit every month. That's good. I don't like how much I'm out of pocket on this, but I want to be as transparent as I can on some of these projects and just kind of let you guys know how these are going. So 
Uh, I'll post up some new videos and do some more whiteboards on some of these. If you like this stuff, just leave me a comment. Let me know what you think will be better or what, what I did right or wrong or what you would do in this situation. Anyways, talk to you guys later. And uh, check back. I'll be posting up some new videos uh, as soon as I can. Bye.